Welcome to Rising. We have a stellar show planned for you this Wednesday morning. I was a little late because I had difficulty finding an electronic scooter that was working. Oh, I had no. to walk like two blocks until I got one. And then I was hitting every light. And though I love to just, you know, zip through traffic, uh, I was being especially against taking risks this morning. Well, so. I'm glad that you are risk averse. I hope one day that gets you to wear a helmet on your way to work. No. Robbie, whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what would we do without you? Uh, a helmet? Okay. <laughs> Have the terrorists already won? Okay. That's what I would like to ask oh my you. God. I thought this was still a free country, but uh, but uh, maybe not. <laughs> can't All right. with you. <laughs> let's, let's get to the news, Let's Robbie. get to the news, All right. We? Well, first up, a settlement has been reached in one of the most historic defamation cases in American history. Dominion Voting Systems versus Fox News. Just moments before opening statements were set to begin Tuesday afternoon, Fox News agreed to pay nearly $800 million to Dominion over promoting falsehoods that the 2020 election was rigged and that Dominion's machines counted fraudulent votes. The settlement shields Fox from what was likely to have been grueling and potentially embarrassing coverage of internal strife between the network's executives, anchors, and producers in the weeks leading to the 2020 election. Lead Dominion attorney Justin Nelson spoke outside the courthouse yesterday. Let's watch. The truth matters. Lies have consequences. Over two years ago, a torrent of lies swept Dominion and election officials across America into an alternative universe of conspiracy theories causing grievous harm to Dominion and the country. Today's settlement of $787,500,000 represents vindication and accountability. Lies have consequences. Now, Fox News is not completely out of the woods yet. The media giant is facing another multi-billion dollar lawsuit from another voting technology company, Smartmatic, that alleges Fox broadcast lies that decimated its business. So there will be another one of these suits, uh, potentially could be a settlement as well, maybe earlier this time. Uh, I, I think... I think it's obvious that Dominion was in a really strong position, uh, despite the very high bar that a defamation lawsuit like this has to clear. Um, there were setbacks for Fox even as recently as last week in terms of, of they had they'd put off the judge with the some of the attorney's behavior mm -hmm. and not disclosing exactly what uh, what uh, Rupert Murdoch's title and position was. So the jury was delayed. You know, while they could really see if they could uh, they could put together a last minute um, a last minute deal. Um, it's funny. I was just watching. Um, I've, I've been rewatching Succession uh, with my <laughs> wife, who's watching it for the first time, and we just watched the episode at like the shareholders meeting mm -hmm. where they're rushing to make a deal with the. Pro with mm -hmm. the the, uh, the 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 the, the coalition of people yeah. who are trying to take over the business, and it, 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 it I was watching this as this was happening. It was felt very similar <laughs> echoes of like last minute, can they yeah. put a deal together? Well, that's not wrong. Look, I I in my experience, you know, as an attorney, cases settle. Cases settle because litigation is incredibly expensive and, and takes forever. And and takes forever, and is frankly unpredictable. And these corporations are risk averse. And look, I know that some people feel as though Dominion should have pushed through one because of the kind of public you know, disclosure value of unpacking more of what's been going on behind the scenes at Fox. Others feel as though, you know, the settlement value of, you know, 700 odd million dollars is so much less than the 1.6 billion. But keep in mind, 700 and, you know, nearly $8 million is many times. 800 million dollars. Yeah. Is, yeah. Many, is many times more than Dominion's yearly earnings, like right. by orders of magnitude. Right. This is a real boon for that company. Also, it's worth noting kind of the posture you referenced, some of the antagonism that had happened with some of the lawyers and the judge. Um, but there was a lot of other stuff that went down this week. Um, the judge sanctioned Fox News for withholding evidence, admonished it for not being straightforward with him. He said he would allow Dominion to conduct an additional deposition with Rupert Murdoch at Fox's expense. And I think that that, from a Fox News perspective, having that deposition, knowing what we've gotten out so far, the potential embarrassment of that hanging over their head might have been one of the things that went ahead and pushed them over into settlement territory. Um, and the, the judge also had ruled that Fox lawyers could not use newsworthiness 
as a legal defense, which narrowed their potential trial strategies. So the idea that even if something was wrong, it's something that people are saying, so we should have people on to cover it. Once that's off the table, it's not really clear what they really would have in terms of um, counter arguments here. Mm -hmm. Well, and look, I, I think you, you can argue that this is a good outcome. Right, I know people, many people, many critics of Fox were eager to learn even more damaging and embarrassing uh, information about the company. That was the major animating um, agenda of so many mainstream media outlets covering this gleefully. And you know what? Turnabout is fair play. Fox would cover their uh, legal troubles with great glee as well. So, you know, these are rival firms within an industry battling each other fine, you know, that's the way it is. But I, I think, and I've said as when we've discussed this, that I would be uh, I would be concerned from a journalistic standpoint, from a freedom of expression standpoint, about a ruling on the books that impacts a a media company's ability to have on guests, even guests that are cranks and have controversial, likely wrong things to say, uh, because sometimes a perspective that seems laughable and wrong and is totally counter to everything legitimate people think and is totally conspiratorial, every now and then it ends up to be right. We, we, we at our show, we explore some of those things along the lines of at least foreign policy and, uh, and, and perhaps COVID. Some things that were utterly pre preposterous have, uh, have, are not so preposterous anymore. Um, so I would worry about a slippery slope along that line if there was a ruling on the books saying that they were ultimately um, guilty of defamation. We didn't cross that bridge. They paid, so they, they have to make right to this company that was harmed by the statements made by guests on the program. So maybe this is a win-win-win situation. It is worth noting that this is a defamation claim and the idea that there might be a guest who is incorrect. So there's two layers of this. One, it's knowing that the guest is going to say something incorrect, factually incorrect, not opinion-based incorrect, mm -hmm. but factually incorrect and having them on anyway, despite there being, again, a record of internal conversation that acknowledges that the only value of having this person on is that it appeals to an audience that is very pro-Trump and is embracing this argument not for fact reasons, but because it bolsters a narrative from a politician that they enjoy and will help Fox in the ratings. So that's one aspect of it. The other aspect of it is, is the defamation aspect. So conceivably, you could have all those other elements, uh, a guest that you know is incorrect, that you have on mm -hmm. anyway because the audience likes it, but the guest, what they're saying, doesn't defame another party. So. The slippery slope argument would require a lot of different parts of this to be in place. The idea that we have a guest on that says, I don't know, you know, aliens have landed and in, invaded Joe mm -hmm. Biden's brain, you know, I guess it <laughs> defames Joe Biden, but let's say mm -hmm. aliens have- Well, uh, public <laughs> figure is harder to- Sure, but control. you know, a aliens have invaded and they're, you know, all mm -hmm. over New Jersey. Okay. You know, you can have that on, but you're still not in the context where you're in this position, where you're, have, you're, you're being sued for defamation, because conceivably, mm -hmm. who was actually hurt? It's a weird story. It's a wrong story. It might undermine the credibility of the institution. So I, I, I hear what you're saying about that, but I do think it's worth parsing out exactly what would be required, not just the defamation, but also a explicit and express behind the scenes knowledge based on documents that we have written or communications that have otherwise been captured between us that admit that we know better and are only doing something to advance the, the financial interest of the company, which again is not something that I think that is journalism or I'm especially concerned about protecting. Yeah, I think it is, it should be perfectly open to criticism, but again, this was a lawsuit, and a lawsuit aimed not just at the people who literally made the statements, but a lawsuit aimed at the platform at which the statements were made. And yes, we're learning some pretty damning and embarrassing things about what some of the figures involved who decided to platform those people really, really thought about them. Um, but I would, and I would say they should take their licks for now that's in the public record, and you should you know, think whatever you think about those people or their integrity based on that. But Again, a, a decision on the books that then impacts the financial bottom line of a company and might make other media companies very wary to have to have weirdos and outsiders be a part of the of the dialogue doesn't seem like something to me that necessarily serves the public interest. Well, what do you make about this argument that some um, some folks are making that the settlement doesn't include an apology? Uh, that sure. Dominion, that Fox News doesn't actually have to admit that it 
spread misinformation and that it was wrong. And you saw a little bit in the uh, Dominion representatives spokesperson there that said that the settlement is accountability. That's the line they've been using, that the settlement is accountability, that apologies are about ac accountability. And since we're having the settlement, that's sufficient. What do you make of that? So Fox News said in a statement about the settlement, we acknowledge the court's rulings, finding certain claims about Dominion to be false. This settlement reflects Fox's continued commitment to the highest journalistic standards. So they acknowledge that the claims made were false. Um, you're right. It's not a, it's, they don't technically say the words, we are sorry or we apologize. Um, they are paying, you know, three quarters of a billion dollars. Or not, you know, it's, and again, it's not that just that apology, there, there was some false claims. Sometimes false claims get made on the air. The question is whether or not they knowingly created a context for false mm -hmm. claims to be said. Knowingly said, we know this is malarkey, but we're going to have these guests on because we know our audience likes malarkey and we're going to feed it to them. That's the bit that gets the company on the hook as opposed to the individuals. And mm -hmm. that's the bit for which I think some people are still wanting an apology. But look, there's this other lawsuit coming down the pike and we'll see if those that, as you say, are kind of thirsting for it or <laughs> rabid for it uh, among a largely liberal audience will actually get what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. We're rising right after this.